Okay, so my name is uh, Adrian Ranea, and in this talk, I will present implicit white box implementation white boxing AR exercise, which is a joint work with Joaquin Valdrembese and Barton. So, traditionally, uh, in cryptography, we design algorithms to be secure in the black box model. That means that we assume that the attacker can tamper with the input and output of the algorithms. But this is not the case in some real world scenarios where the attacker can also tamper with internal information of the primitive. And the worst case scenario is captured by the white box model, where the attacker is assumed to have full control on the device running the crypto computation. That means that the adversary can observe without noise and modify all intimate values during the execution of the algorithm. And this, for example, captures an attacker that attached a debugger to the software impl implementation and then can intercept some system calls or read or tamper with. I'm just going to hide this window for you. Okay, Very perfect. perfect. <laughs> and tamper with um, um, values in the memory or in the register. And um, white box cryptography is the field of uh, cryptography that studies uh, cryptographic content measures to secure software implementation of primitive in the white box model. White box cryptography was originally designed for DRM and uh, digital rights management or the protection of digital media, since in this case, the, the consumer could be considered in some cases a malicious endpoint. But right now, white box cryptography is also being used in other applications such as uh, mobile payments and in general other applications where one is deploying a sensitive cryptographic implementation in an untrusted environment, such as a smartphone. And um, white box implementation are the software implementations that are designed to prevent white box attacks. In academia, mostly all implementations are fixed key implementations. That means that the key of the cipher is hidden and hard code in implementation and is not an input of it. Thus, to build a fixed key implementation, you need a white box method or a compiler that will take the key of the cipher and also some initial randomness and this will produce the software implementation, the white box implementation. In academia, all white box implementation of block ciphers, um, they have a method that is uh, public, but it's not the case in some commercial implementation where they have a method that is not known and they rely on the secrecy of the compiler for the security. But in this work, we only focus on academic implementation where the method is public. A white box attacker can have uh, different goals, this could be, for example, extracting the key of the implementation. This could be copying the implementation to another device or even getting the decryption function of a white box implementation of the encryption function. But here we focus on key extraction resistance. That is the minimum goal a white box implementation should achieve. And even achieving this goal is very ambitious and challenging because, for example, this implies that a white box implementation should be secure against all side channels and fall attacks. And the first white box implementation of a block cipher that was proposed was a white box implementation of AAS by Cho and others. And since then, many implementations have been proposed, but mostly all of them are based on the same idea. And now these implementations are called C implementations. So the idea of this implementation is first, the cipher is decomposed into rounds. Then in each round, we introduce random permutations that are called wrong encodings. And to cancel the effect of these encodings, the input encoding of the next round is chosen as the inverse of the output encoding of the previous round. And this is done in all rounds. And then the wrong encodings are merged with the wrong function, and this creates the encode wrong functions. The first and the last encoding are not canceled, they are called the external encoding, and they introduce some usability problems because they make the implementation not functionally equivalent to the underlying cipher, but they are needed for security. And without the C implementation, are easy to break. Then to, to build a C implementation, one needs to choose the size of the wrong encodings and also uh, to implement the encode rounds in a way that the wrong key material cannot be extracted. To choose the wrong encodings in the implementation, they choose small nonlinear encodings and small 
uh, linear functions. For example, in the initial white box AS implementation, they chose four bit Lorian no encodings and eight bit linear encodings. And to implement the encode rounds, the idea is to decompose the rounds into smaller into smaller operations, represent each operation as a lookup table, and then merge the round encodings with the lookup table, and also introduce some intermediate encodings to protect the intermediate lookup tables. So in the end, each, each round is a network of lookup table, and they are implemented in software like this. Uh, the security here, the idea is that the wrong key material is hidden in some lookup tables, and this tables are protected by wrong encodings. Ideally, the larger the encodings, the better for the security, but the encodings need to be small because they need to match the size of the lookup table and this lookup table have exponential size. The size of the encodings is very limited. For example, in the initial implementation, they use mainly a bit lookup table and the size of that implementation was around one megabyte. This initial implementation was broken and since then main implementation have been proposed but in the end, all of them have been broken. The only other method that has been uh, proposed in academia is the self-equivalence framework that is based on the idea of self equivalence. A self equivalence of a function, that's not the one. A self equivalence of a function S is a pair of permutation A and B that when composed to this function S, the same function is obtained. So a self equivalence is a pair of permutation that they cancel each other following this cancellation rule. And a self-equivalence implementation also use this idea of encode round functions, but here the wrong encodings are self-equivalence of the S-box layers. And the wrong encodings are not merged with the whole wrong function, but they are only merged with a fine layer containing the wrong key material. And this creates the encode of fine layers. The advantages of this type of implementation is that the encode of fine layers can be implemented with uh, matrices, so no lookup tables are needed. That means that if the, if the S-box layer or the nonlinear layer have large self-equivalence, then this type of implementation can use large encodings. Another advantage is that previous attacks have shown that C implementation can be reduced to self-equivalence implementation. That means that an attacker could transform the implementation to a self-equivalence one. But the opposite is not true, in particular, if the self-equivalence implementation is using large encodings. The main problem of using self-equivalence implementation is that one needs a nonlinear layer that has many and a large self-equivalence, and this is very difficult to find. So in this work, we started by finding such a nonlinear layer. And we decided to work with the permute modular addition, which is simply the modular addition is turned into permutation by giving to the output one of the inputs. One of the reasons that we choose this operation is that quadratic functions tend to have many self equivalence and the modular addition behaves like a quadratic function. In particular, the modular addition is set equivalent to a quadratic function. And two functions are said to be set equivalent if you can take the graph of one function and get the graph of the other function by applying an affine transformation. And this equivalence have been used previously, for example, to study S boxes, since the CSAT equivalence preserves some cryptographic properties like differential and linear ones. But here in this work, we use this equivalence to propose a new method to find self equivalence. And it's based on the idea of graph automorphism. A graph automorphism, here we call it just an affine permutation that map the graph of a function to the same graph. You can see this as a self equivalence of the graph of a function. And the idea of, of our method is that if you have a function f, that is, this is an equivalent to a function of low degree g, we start by finding a special subset of graph automorphism for this function g. And we found this graph automorphism by solving a functional equation. And since this function is of low degree, this functional equation is easy to solve. And then we transform the graph automorphism that we found to the self equivalence of f by using the system equivalence between these two functions. We implement this, this method in a new open source tool, Bullcrypt, that also implements other functionalities related to vectorial Boolean function, related to self equivalence, a functional equation. So, this tool and the documentation, you can find it in this repository in GitHub. We apply this method 
to the permute model addition. And we found linear affine and affine quadratic self equivalence. So linear and affine self equivalence are pair of permutation where both are linear or affine. And affine quadratic is a pair of permutation where one is affine and the other one is quadratic. And we found um, self equivalence up to world size 64 bit, that means input size 128. But later we optimize this method and we extend this result up to an input size 512 bit. And we found an exponential number of self equivalence. But uh, we didn't prove that these are all the self equivalence. So although we expect that this is the case, we leave this as an, as an open problem. So now we have a nonlinear layer with many and large self equivalence. So now we are ready to build a web of implementation using this self equivalence. Well, there is a problem. The problem is that these self equivalence are very structured, they are very sparse, and this could be a problem when building a self equivalent implementation using these self equivalence. And actually, in a later work, we built a web of implementation using this self equivalence and we broke it because of this structure that they have. So now we are back to square one, even though we found a nonlinear area with these properties, we could not build a web of implementation. But later we solved this problem by proposing a new method, the implicit framework. So the implicit framework is a method to build web of implementation of block ciphers that have the following properties. So implicit implementation or also encode implementation, that means that they use the idea of encode rounds and wrong encodings. But here the wrong encodings are the composition of a fine permutation and a fine nonlinear self equivalence. I will talk later about these wrong encodings. But by, com by combining these two types, we're able to prevent attacks that break C implementation and self equivalence ones. And to implement efficiently the encode wrong functions, the idea is to represent them with system of low degree equations. So to build the rounds of an implicit implementation, we proceed as follows. We first decompose the cipher into rounds. Then we introduce a, a fine nonlinear self equivalence of the round where the first element is fine and the other one is nonlinear. Since they cancel each other, it doesn't change the input and output behavior. Now we introduce between the output of the round and the second element of the self equivalence and a fine permutation C and its inverse. This also doesn't change the input and output behavior of, of the round. And we do this for all rounds and then merge the round function with um, part of the self equivalence and part of the fine permutation, such a way that we split uh, self equivalence and a fine permutation over adjacent rounds. And similar as in previous methods, we need external encodings. So the first and the last encodings are not canceled and they are needed for security. And we build the encode rounds in such a way so that the input encoding can be nonlinear, but the output encoding is always a phi. And later on, I will talk about this restriction. So even, even if the encode rounds are a high degree, we can implement it efficiently by using low degree quasi linear and implicit function. So, first, uh, a function P is an implicit function of F if the zeros of this function P correspond to the points and the image of F. And high degree functions like the modular addition have low degree implicit functions. If we have the implicit function of a function F, we can evaluate it using the implicit function by taking the input, substituting into the implicit function, and solving the, the the remaining system for the remaining variable y. And this system is easy to solve if we require the implicit function to be quasi linear, which is just saying that for all inputs, we assume that the remaining system is a fine. So we can have efficient implicit implementation if we are able to get low degree quasi linear implicit function of the encode rounds. And for the permute modular addition, and we have that this, this, this permutation have a quasi-linear quadratic implicit function. And then in the paper, we show a method to from the implicit function of the nonlinear layer up to obtain the implicit function of the whole encode round. And for this method, we require the previous restriction that the output encoding needs to be a fine. We apply this method to show how to build implicit implementation of ARX ciphers 
but this method can be used for any block cipher as long as one has a quasi-linear implicit function of the non-linear layer. And here in this table, you can see the size and the, uh, for the a size that uh, one single implicit implementation takes, depending on the degree and on the block size of the cipher. So for example, for a cubic implicit function, and for if the block size of the cipher is 64 bit, then each implicit function will require one and a half uh, megabyte. But then if we are going to higher degrees, and if we take a quartic implicit function for a 128-bit block um, cipher, then this will require around 200 uh, me megabytes. And the degree of uh, an implicit function depends on the degree of the implicit function of the nonlinear layer, but also on the degree of the fine nonlinear self-equivalence. And for example, for the permute model addition, if we use a fine quadratic self-equivalence, then the implicit function will be cubic or quartic, but if we only use a fine encodings, then the implicit function will be quadratic. And even though this, the implicit framework might introduce a significant overhead, in particular for high degrees, this method is the first one that can be applied to RX ciphers, and it's also the first one that can consider practical implementation with large encodings. And as we will see, they are crucial for the security. So as in previous methods, the implicit framework only targets the security goal of key structure resistance. That means that we assume that the attacker is in possession of an implicit function, of a, sorry, of an implicit implementation. We assume that the attacker knows the method and all the details, but doesn't know the key or the encodings. And the goal of the attacker is to extract the key from the implicit implementation. And to understand the security of this method, we first consider all known generic attacks. Generic at attacks are those that can be applied to any webbox implementation of any cipher because they do not exploit the underlying properties of the cipher. And we focus on generic attacks because sometimes if you break a webbox implementation of a particular cipher, that might not say much about the security of the method. And also because, for example, in previous methods like the CGO framework have been fully broken with generic attacks. So any new method that is secure against all known generic attacks is still a significant advance over the state of, of the art. And the full analysis is in the paper, but here I will just skip to the conclusion. That is that if an implicit implementation uses a nonlinear input encoding, such as quadratic input encodings, or the nonlinear layer of the cipher is given by a large function, not the concatenation of small S boxes, then, an implicit, then all known generic attacks fail against uh, uh, this implicit implementation. But this analysis also shows that uh, this method cannot secure SPN ciphers like AES if one only uses a finite encodings. So one will need to, to choose another cipher and choose a large nonlinear ledger like the permute model addition or choose uh, nonlinear input encodings. And previous attacks mainly don't work against this method because previous attacks um, mainly exploit that the encodings are of a small size. So here we also propose a new uh, generic attack that is more suitable to the implicit framework that is based on the idea of uh, reducing the implicit implementation to a self-equivalence one. And since self-equivalence implementation are more efficient than implicit implementation, if you can do this reduction, then there is no benefit from using implicit implementation. And also if you can do this reduction, all the attacks that apply to self-equivalence implementation could not be applied to the implicit one. Our attack is based on functional equation. And because we only focus on affine encodings, these functional equations are also called affine equivalence problems. So here, the idea is that you have a function, a known function G that is equal to the composition of three function. And you know the central map F, but the other, the other functions are a non-affine permutation. And the goal is to find a solution of this equation, a pair of function X and Y that makes this equality true. So I won't go to all the details of this attack, but for the attack to succeed, the attacker needs to solve one of these uh, functional equations. For the equation in the, in the left side, the attacker can build an affine equivalence problem involving the encode rounds, where the central map is the wrong function of, of the cipher. The advantages and of using, well, the disadvantages of using this equation is that this equation can be of high degree. And this is the case, for example, of the modular addition. And also the attacker only has black box access 
to this equation because the attacker doesn't know the coefficients involved in this equation. The advantages of using this equation is that if the attacker finds any solution, then the attacker will succeed. If the attacker cannot solve and this equation, the attacker could try the functional equation in the right side. Here, this equation involves the implicit function of the code round, where the central map is the implicit function of the nonlinear layer. The advantages of using this equation is that this equation is usually of low degree. For example, in the case of the modular addition and affine encodings, this equation is quadratic. And also the attacker has wide access because the attacker knows all the coefficients involved in this equation. The main problem is that for the attacker to succeed, the attacker first needs to find a solution and then he needs to remove the graph automorphism U used in the implicit function. I did not talk about this, but when building the implicit function, we're also adding a graph automorphism that obfuscates the implicit function of the nonlinear layer. This preserves the zeros of the implicit function so it doesn't change the input and output behavior. So for the attacker to succeed, they, they need to remove this graph automorphism from the solution. And we check for the modular addition and we do not found an efficient solution to solve the left equation, um, to solve the uh, right equation that could be possible, but since the number of graph automorphism is exponential for the modular addition, we did not find a way to solve for the attacker in this part. Um, our analysis was also a bit uh, limited. For example, we only consider affine encodings. Um, the impression framework, it, it will require future research and more time to increase the assurance in the security that it, that it provides. And that's why we're also proposing another open source tool, Whitebox RX, to easily build Whitebox implementation of RX ciphers. And we hope that with all the examples that can be generated using this tool, this will encourage uh, further research on this topic. So with this tool, there are many options that one can choose, like the inputs and block cipher to be insecure, the degree of the encodings, where to use external encodings, where to use additional content measures, and you um, all this information you can find in this repository on GitHub. And finally, to conclude, um, in the design of WebOS implementation, there hasn't been much progress in the last year, and here we address this challenging problem by proposing the implicit framework, which is a new method to build white box implementation of block cipher. It is currently the only method that prevents all known generic attack. It's the first method that can be applied to uh, ARC ciphers and to generate implicit implementation of ARC cipher, one needs to sample cipher equivalence and graph automorphism. And that's why we're also proposing a new method to find self equivalence. This is based on the CCD equivalence. And we applied for the permutable addition and found for the first time the self equivalence of this uh, of this operation. This method um, uh, this method was implemented in the new open source tool Bullcrypt, and we are also proposing another open source tool to easily build a web of implementation of of ARX ciphers. The implicit framework is a radical new method. That's why many open problems arise, and there is a lot of future work. And this includes, for example, investigating new generic attacks or particular attacks to, to a specific implementation, considering other nonlinear layers. Here we only focus on the modular addition, but also to study implicit implementation without external encodings against some weaker attacks. And that was all for this talk. You can find more information in the paper. Thank you for your time. Yeah, I can see the question. Okay. So the question is, is there an issue to understand reason why your construction resists Gable's attacks like correlation attacks? Where the the short answer is that because or our method use external encodings, and in particular, these external encodings are given by large function and other composition of small space boxes. Right now, no one has found a way to use uh, Gable's attacks to bypass these external encodings, only in the case of using small external encodings. So that's why there are no attacks right now that have been published that can, with Gable's attacks, break external encodings. Does this answer your question? <laughs> 
So, yeah, so the question was for a given nonlinear function, was it easy to find self equivalence? Yeah. So, okay. So, the total number of self equivalence, for example, in our case that we tried for the permute moderation, was not possible because we only found a subset of them. Because to solve this functional equation for large word size, we had first to fix some coefficient in the system. And by doing this, we remove some, some uh, solutions. But we did some experiment for small word, uh, word sizes. And for the permutable addition, we were able to find all of them. And then for another non uh, li li linear layer, if that function is the equivalent to a low degree, and in particular, quadratic function, then it should be uh, feasible to use this, this method. <laughs> yeah. So I have to say that most methods in white box have been broken after two or three years. <laughs> but so here I'm confident that probably the method will not be broken, but there could be that some implementation of a particular and cipher that could be could be broken. And in particular, this method and for some affine learning self equivalence like a quadratic input encodings, I have some confidence that. But only time, time will tell. <laughs> yeah. It's still impossible to hear uh, us on Zoom. Where is this microphone? Can hear you over yeah, there, yes, but no, they say they can. Oh, well, we turned it up. It could be, I'm going to go check the video feed there, but we did turn it up. So With the next. Okay. Really be the next video is uh, the next talk is uh, uh, online and it's actually